In 2025, scientists discovered a space object whose materials closely matched alloys manufactured on Earth in the 1970s, including precise isotope ratios. Multiple independent laboratories confirmed these results. Initially, this suggested a long-lost human-made probe might have finally returned. But as often happens in science, the story was more complicated. Could clues pointing to Earth actually hint at something far stranger? Researchers at the University of Mexico, the University of Georgia, and the Southwest Research Institute began by scanning the object's surface, isolating its alloys, and conducting detailed analyses. Spectroscopy and material tests revealed a titanium-aluminum composition consistent with aerospace alloys used in probe construction. The isotope ratios matched terrestrial patterns rather than the mix found in meteorites or natural space debris. Each lab followed strict protocols, using energy-dispersive X-ray spectroscopy and scanning electron microscopy, yet no discrepancies emerged. Results from all labs aligned closely. The metallic layers, trace elements, and rare earth signatures fit the profile of terrestrial manufacturing from the 1970s through the 1990s. For independent confirmations reinforced this conclusion. The titanium-aluminum blend, isotopic match, and absence of cosmic ray spallation all suggested a human-made object, likely crafted during the golden era of space exploration. These were not meteorite or interstellar signatures, they corresponded to ratios typical of rockets, satellites, and deep space probes. Further examination revealed the sphere's surface finish resembled the protective coatings used on electronics to shield against radiation in space. Microscopic analysis indicated uniformity consistent with vapor deposition, a process used in probe manufacturing. Its reflectivity, coating and faint residues of adhesive material resembled components of vintage space hardware. For a moment, scientists felt reassured. The evidence pointed to a human-made probe returning home. The numbers, materials, and modern laboratory validation lent confidence to this narrative. However, questions remained about missing data and chain of custody. During the space race, dozens of probes and satellites were launched, many of which were lost or untracked. The Pioneer 6 to 9 missions, 1965 to 1968, entered solar orbit with limited expected lifetimes. NASA engineers were occasionally surprised by brief signals from long silent probes a phenomenon compounded by Cold War-era secrecy and incomplete records. Early trajectory calculations relied on slide rules and primitive computers, so small errors could accumulate over decades. Lost objects sometimes reappeared, initially catalogued as unidentified. This history made the notion of a returning human artifact plausible. Observatories across three continents tracked the bugosphere as it passed through the inner solar system. Telescopes detected consistent glints of reflected sunlight, not random flashes. The reflectivity patterns resembled those of vintage solar arrays, with broad regular flashes corresponding to slow deliberate rotation. Thermal imaging revealed a persistent heat signature, indicating internal electronics still operated decades after launch. Rotation analysis matched gyroscopic stabilization techniques common in late 20th century probes. With a mass of roughly 20 pounds and a diameter of about half a meter, its size and spin characteristics aligned with uncrewed survey craft designs. Radio astronomers detected faint, periodic blips at 8 to 10 kHz, signals consistent and repetitive, though no known probes of that era transmitted at this exact frequency. Some suggested it could be a residual telemetry beacon powered by dwindling energy, a last attempt to call home. Taken together, reflected sunlight, stable heat, controlled rotation, and persistent radio signals reinforce the idea of a long-lost human probe functioning as intended after decades in space. Yet, closer inspection introduced doubt. Electron microscopy revealed a surface free of damage. Unlike typical probes, there were no micrometeoroid pits, impact craters, or tracks from cosmic dust. The alloys retained their original luster, showing none of the expected solar wind or radiation effects. Space is harsh, Panels degrade, circuits fail, and surfaces erode over decades. But the bugosphere's solar panels maintained near-perfect efficiency. Comparative testing against known satellite and lunar module samples showed that no conventional spacecraft retained such pristine functionality. Attempts to artificially age the shell failed. Accelerated radiation exposure, ion bombardment, and even diamond-tipped scratching left the surface unscathed. The titanium-aluminum exterior seemed impervious to the forces that typically define space weathering. 
material scientists began to scrutinize the situation more closely. If the object had truly departed Earth in the 1970s or 1980s, it should show clear signs of aging. Yet, every test revealed a level of preservation that defied expectations. Questions arose. Had the bugosphere really spent decades in space, or was it constructed using methods beyond the technological reach of its supposed era? The comforting theory of a returning probe started to unravel, and curiosity shifted toward disbelief. What initially seemed like closure now hinted at a far deeper enigma. Thermal imaging specialists at MIT monitored the object's heat signature in real time. For days, the bugosphere continuously absorbed over 100 watts from its surroundings, functioning silently like an appliance without any visible power source. Despite this energy draw, the surface remained just above freezing. Battery models and solar panel technology from the late 20th century could not sustain such output for decades. The readings forced scientists to confront the limits of vintage space engineering. By all standards, the object should have been inert, but it emitted a consistent signature of ongoing internal activity. Physicists simulated energy budgets and ran multiple checks for hidden sources. Some speculated about a nuclear core, but no radiation was detected. Others proposed the sphere might tap environmental energy in unknown ways. The only certainty was that its energy output defied every principle of Cold War-era technology. Meanwhile, orbital analysts at the European Space Agency and JPL studied its approach. Comparing its trajectory to every launch window from 1970 to 1990 revealed no matches. The object's path required gravity assists and maneuvers impossible for known probes. Its velocity did not align with decaying orbits of lost satellites, and even declassified military logs could not explain the trajectory. Without a launch record, its movement could not be reconciled with human technology, making it increasingly clear that this was not a standard returning probe. Material analysis deepened the puzzle. Micro-CT scans from MIT and the University of Georgia revealed a perfectly seamless structure. Engineers found no welds, seams, or tool marks. The metallic shell contained three concentric layers, each nested flawlessly within the next. At the molecular level, the bonds between layers appeared fused atom by atom, an effect unmatched by any known manufacturing process. Inside, networks of microspheres and fiber-optic filaments were suspended without adhesives or fasteners. Such precision has no precedent, even among the most advanced secret aerospace programs of the late 20th century. Radio teams focused on the faint 8 to 10 kHz pulses emitted by the object. Their precise, repeating pattern was unlike any deep space communication used by NASA or ESA. The signals carried no recognizable telemetry or encoded data and resisted decoding. Engineers described the transmission as an empty handshake, a rhythm resembling a probe attempting communication, yet without any content. Some speculated the signal might be deliberate camouflage, by mimicking human technology, the sphere could conceal its true purpose. The combination of flawless construction and misleading signaling suggested something unsettling. The bugosphere might have been intentionally designed to imitate human probes, down to every detail. For the first time, familiar materials no longer provided reassurance. The sphere was no longer just a relic, it was a puzzle crafted to be mistaken for something familiar. Interpretations of the data split the scientific community. At the National Autonomous University of Mexico, a materials analyst summarized the dilemma, the barrier isn't capability, it's access. The alloy and isotope ratios match Earth, but the assembly method and longevity do not. Some argued the object might originate from a classified Cold War program, pointing to lost satellites, undocumented technical advances, and patchy records. If this were the case, the impossible construction could be explained as undisclosed technology. Others saw intentional mimicry. Independent astronomers reviewed minor planet center logs and found several unexplained objects in orbit with similar patterns of movement, composition, and faint radio emissions. These repeated anomalies suggested a coordinated effort to appear as human technology while observing silently. The discovery of the Yumbosphere, exhibiting similar traits, reinforced the notion that the Bugosphere might not be alone. At NASA headquarters, debates over next steps stalled. Officials weighed options from capture to passive observation or even denial. Concerns included potential biological contamination and international repercussions if the object's origin were revealed. Internal memos emphasized the reality of the anomalies, energy output, 
preservation, and unusual construction could not be explained by conventional means. If the bugosphere is indeed a lost human probe, it defies every model of aging and degradation. If it is not, its origin and purpose remain entirely unknown. Every analysis deepens the mystery. Why use Earth materials but surpass our technological capabilities? Why mimic vintage technology while concealing advanced features? Could the object be a message, a test, or a warning? For now, the sphere remains untouched, suspended between the human urge to understand and the caution prompted by the unknown. No agency has committed to a recovery mission. The central question is no longer what it is, but what it means that we cannot definitively identify it. What would you do if the familiar suddenly stopped looking back?